Hey guys, if you're looking to pass the CK in 2022, you're in the right place. So today I'll be walking you through exactly how to pass the CK as a beginner such as myself. So this just shows that I did pass in 2022 on uh, January 6th. And so let's jump into a little bit about the test. So during the test, you're allowed to have one additional tab open with your Kubernetes documentation. Uh, you cannot have any discuss uh, documentation articles open during the exam. If you do, they will close out your, uh, your test. In addition, if you have more than one tab open, they will also close out your test. So make sure you keep one tab open um, and you, know, you should be fine. And uh, one tip I have regarding this documentation is you know, create a folder on your browser with CKA documentation, which I can show you guys a little bit later. Um, and so it just saves you a lot of time. So this exam is, is about two things. One, knowing how to do the material, but two, also knowing how to uh, manage your time throughout this exam. So during the test, you're not told exactly how much time you're left with. There's a bar that shows you how much time you have from the beginning and it kind of goes down and shrinks. Um, and then the proctor will let you know when you have like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes left, uh, but you don't see the exact amount of time you have left. So time management is huge with this test. Um, and then in addition, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this test is from the Linux Foundation. You do buy the exam directly from them. Um, and I can show you guys that page as well a little bit later, but let's jump into the resources that I used. So I've read multiple articles online saying you need to use, you know, all of these different resources. Um, you know, I think there's something called Kubernetes the hard way. Uh, I didn't use that because, um, you know, honestly, I didn't really want to. I, I felt that it wasn't really necessary. Um, I just used something called Code Cloud. And CodeCloud has a course by a guy named Mumshad. And this guy, Mumshad, has basically created a Kubernetes CKA course, as well as he's done a CCAD and a CKS course as well. But he's created these courses for people like me, someone who doesn't know anything about this stuff, needs to be kind of trained from ground zero, and then built up over to the CKA. Uh, so it's a really helpful course, really, um, you know, straightforward. And the way that he's done it is you look at about two or three different lecture videos, but then right after that, you're, you're going to apply whatever you've seen in those videos into a practice test. Now, those practice tests are super helpful because, you know, as someone who doesn't know what they're doing in the beginning, they give you hints, they show you the solution. They also have a video, a solution video after every test. So if you're stuck on something and you're like, I don't know how to do this, go to the next uh, lesson and it's gonna be a video of that, you know, how what's the solution of that uh, practice test. So that kind of stuff is super helpful. And again, you know, I didn't have any Linux experience. I didn't have any Kubernetes experience, but this course really helps you if you are in the same position as myself. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the browser. I'll walk through. Uh, a little bit about you know what code cloud looks like a little bit about you know how I structured my CKA documentation uh, for Kubernetes and then we'll talk a little bit about the exam that you purchase from uh, the Linux Foundation and they also uh, give you access to a practice test uh, platform called Killer SH uh, also known as Killer Shell it is designed to be harder than the CKA. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through that a little bit and, uh, yep, let's get to it. So I want to talk a little bit about Code Cloud here, uh, walk you guys through, you know, what it looks like a little bit. So this is what Code Cloud site looks like. Uh, you know, you would sign up for an account, do all that kind of stuff. And so under learning paths here, they have a few different things, uh, but we'll just stick with Kubernetes for now. So if you go here, It'll show you, um, you know, basically this course is really good because it's designed for somebody like me, someone who doesn't know anything about Kubernetes. Uh, you know, it doesn't assume that you have a lot of background experience in anything. Um, you know, so it really starts you off from the basics. So you can see we have DevOps, prereqs. Uh, we've got, you know, Docker, be 
beginner kind of level courses. Then it jumps you into Kubernetes just for beginners. So it'll explain a little bit about some of the concepts. Uh, there may be one or two small practice exams in there just to get you, you know, familiar with what it is, what it may look like. Um, and then they kind of throw you into the pool of the CKA exam. And so when you go into this, that's when they have the format of, you know, you may look at two or three different lecture videos, and then you're working on a practice exam based off those lecture videos. And so this is kind of what the practice environment looks like. They give you, you know, a prompt, pull this or do this. Um, you know, some of the questions may have like a multiple choice kind of thing. Uh, again, that's not going to be on the CKA, um, but they just do that kind of to get you familiar with how to work with those kinds of questions. Now, hypothetically, if you didn't know how to do this, you know, they do have two different tabs. Uh, they have a hint tab, which if you don't want to see the solution yet, you can just get a hint for it um, and see if you can work off that. And if you're really stuck, you know, you can always look at the solution tab. Uh, you know, I, I've looked at it multiple times. You know, a lot of times you're creating something like a YAML file and you're like, I, I don't know why mine is way off. So you look at theirs, they usually have an example of the YAML file so you can refer to it. Now, the best thing about this course is uh, the mock exams to me. And that's because they give you, you know, first of all, they give you three different mock exams. So it covers a, a good amount of topics. And then in addition, they have solution videos for each of those exams. Um, and these are pretty long videos because they really go into depth and show you how to solve each and every one of those questions. So if you take mock exam number two, and you don't know how to do question number eight, right? You can just go to that solution video for mock exam number two, look at how they do number eight, and you can always go back and do it on your own. Um, the key to passing the CKA exam is all, you know, repetition, right? So learning how to do the same thing over and over and over, right? That's how you get it down. Um, and that's just, you know, for me, that's what really worked is going through these exams looking at the videos until I really almost aced all of them. The second thing I want to talk about is the Kubernetes documentation that they allow you to have uh, during the exam. So again, they only let you have one tab open um, and you can see, you know, they've got a few different little uh, platforms, if you will, here. Um, but again, they do not let you have blog. Uh, and so just, just try to stick with the documentation as much as possible. Uh, that's the stuff that's really going to help you. So if we look up here on my tabs, I, I have a CK documentation folder. Uh, and in here, you know, I've got all my, all my different documentation things. So if I want to look at persistent volumes, right? Instead of me going through this search and typing persistent volumes and looking for it, and that takes up time, which again, we want to manage our time throughout this exam. So getting to this tab really quick, and being able to copy and paste whatever I need to from this, uh, you know, YAML file template is super, super helpful. Plus, you can always, you know, like control F and say, I want to look at host paths. I don't know, you know, and it just pulls it up. What does it look like in a pod and all that kind of good stuff, right? So it's super helpful to have this ready to go. Um, and plus, you know, I would recommend instead of copying kind of what mine looks like, create your own so you know exactly where your things are uh, in order. And, um, you know, one last thing regarding documentation is make sure you take a look at this Kube Control cheat sheet. So this cheat sheet basically has a few different commands of, you know, a lot of different things. So, uh, you know, you can see here there's finding resources of getting pods from all namespaces, just things like that, right? And so, for example, what I've done is what if I have to look at the logs of something, right? So if I hit that, and I'm still on the, uh, the cheat sheet, but I can link this specific area uh, specifically and name it kind of top or logs, right? So if I'm looking for logs, I can refer to these uh, within this cheat sheet. So do things like that. That's really going to help you save time, and it's really going to help you get more familiar with uh, the documentation. So a little bit about the test. The test is from the Linux Foundation. Uh, it does cost 375. Sometimes they do have certain promos uh, that you can apply. Um, I know I had one when I applied mine. And it does come with two different 
attempts. So your first attempt, say you don't pass it, you still get a second attempt, right? And the best thing that they've that they're doing now for the CKA is uh, there is an exam simulator out there called Killer SH. Um, it's basically Killer Shell is what they call it. Um, so that is designed to be way harder than the actual CKA exam. But when you buy it from when you buy the exam directly from the Linux Foundation, they give you two free attempts uh, to that Killer SH exam. So if you go over here, this is what Killer SH kind of looks like, right? So they'll give you, you know, like a question, and then they'll give you some of the, um, you know, commands or how to do it. And so again, these things are a lot harder than the actual CKA exam, but you know, it just helps you kind of understand how to do certain things, right? Um, and I've read online that a lot of people say, you know try and pass this killer sh thing before taking the ck uh i you know respectfully disagree with that because i didn't pass this um not even one time i just really went through the questions looked at everything figured out you know how they're doing it why they're running certain commands um and that should be good enough you know you don't have to be able to pass this killer sh thing it's way too hard to be honest um unless you want to you know that's up to you but just, you know, read through this, browse through it, go through it a few times, and you should be good to go. Uh, you know, for passing the exam, focus on mock exams and look at the solutions. And then, you know, certain things like, uh, for example, if you're in cluster maintenance and you have to do, let's say you have to do like an upgrade on some nodes, uh, go through these practice tests, you know, um, and just get those down really well. Uh, and you should be able to pass, you know, very easily. Um, you know, and if you don't pass the first time, do not get discouraged. But what I would recommend is don't wait too long to take your second exam. Figure out what you remember from the first exam. Uh, try and focus on practicing the things you struggled with. And then maybe a week later or something, schedule the second one. Because the longer you wait, the more you may forget, right? So just stay persistent, stay on it, and, uh, you know, look forward to passing.